Welcome to the Quick Pro Camera Guide for the Canon SL1. This guide is meant to be a study tool to be used in connection with and not a replacement of your camera's owner's manual. The SL1 is a great camera that will capture amazing images as well as HD video. Throughout this guide you will occasionally see symbols at the lower part of your screen. This symbol will be shown when a warning about using the camera is being given. When this symbol is displayed, a helpful tip will be given. Let's get started. Your SL1 has many sophisticated buttons and dials, and to take the best pictures with your camera, you'll want to be familiar with the functions of each of them. Let's begin by taking a closer look at many of the camera's features. Let's first take a look at the top of the camera. First there is the power switch and the mode dial. By rotating the mode dial, you can tell the camera what exposure settings to use. This section of the mode dial has the basic zone modes. In these modes, the camera will do all of the work for you. All you need to do is point and shoot. These modes include the Scene Intelligent Auto, Flash Off, Creative Auto, as well as the Image Zone modes. The Image Zone modes include Portrait, Landscape, Close-Up, and Sports. There is also a special Scene mode. To access the modes that are available within the special Scene mode, press the Quick Control button, which is also the Set button, and press the button again to select the Scene mode. Here you can choose from Kids, Food, Candlelight, Night Portrait, Handheld Night Scene, and HDR Backlight Control. This section of the mode dial has the Creative Zones. When you use the Creative Zone modes, you'll choose many of the camera settings. These zones are more advanced, but with a little practice, they can produce amazing results. The Creative Zone modes include Program Auto Exposure, Shutter Priority, Aperture Priority, and Manual. This is the ISO button, which will allow you to select the ISO setting. After the button has been pressed, use the main dial, cross keys, or touch screen to select the ISO setting. This is the main dial. It's used to control many camera settings. And this is the shutter button. To take a picture, simply press this button halfway down to allow the camera to focus, and then press it the rest of the way down to take the picture. Next, we'll find the hot shoe, where you can attach a variety of external flash units. In front of the hot shoe, there is the built-in flash, which will provide extra light in low light conditions. This is the speaker, which will play sound during movie playback. This is the microphone, which records sound during movie recording. Take care not to cover the microphone during movie recording. Now let's take a look at this side of the camera. This is the flash button. The flash will pop up automatically in several of the basic zones and you can press the flash button to make the flash pop up in the creative zones. This is the red eye reduction and self timer lamp. When red eye reduction is enabled, this lamp will illuminate the subject before the flash fires, which will reduce the appearance of red eyes in people or animals. When the self timer is used, this lamp will illuminate. Here we'll find the lens release button. To attach a lens, make sure that the camera is switched to off. Hold the camera with one hand and the lens with the other like this and align the lens's index with the camera's index of the same color. Then gently rotate the lens until it clicks into place. Take great care not to scratch the lens by allowing it to make contact with anything. When you need to clean your lens, it's a good idea to use a lens cloth. Other fabrics can dull or scratch your lens. When you want to detach a lens, press the lens release button while holding the camera with the same hand, and then with the other hand, rotate the lens until it uncouples. Avoid changing lenses in windy or dusty conditions. This will help the image sensor stay clean and free of dust. This is the depth of field preview button. You can press and hold this button while looking through the viewfinder to see the effect of the aperture setting before you take the picture. 
This is the terminal cover, which will allow you to connect the camera to a variety of other devices, including an external microphone for movie recording, an optional remote control, a computer, compatible printer, or a standard definition TV, or an HD TV. Now let's take a look at the bottom. Here we'll find the card slot battery compartment cover. When you're inserting a memory card, you'll want to make sure that the manufacturer's logo is facing the back of the camera. Simply insert the card until it clicks into place and close the card slot cover. Before you start taking pictures with a new memory card, it's a good idea to format it. Also keep in mind that your camera will operate faster if you periodically format your memory card rather than simply deleting images from it to free up space for more picture taking. Make sure that you do not format your card unless you have already copied the images that you want to save to your computer. Formatting your card will erase all the images. To format the memory card, press the menu button Next, use either the cross keys or touch screen to select the first setup menu. Select Format Card and select OK. Now let's take a look at the back of the camera. The most prominent feature is the large 3-inch LCD touch screen monitor. The sophisticated monitor can be controlled using the camera's buttons and dials and almost all of the functions can also be controlled using the touch screen. This monitor serves several purposes. First, it displays images that have been taken. Using the camera's cross keys, you can scroll through the images on the memory card. You can also simply swipe the touch screen to scroll through the images. Second, when the quick control button is pressed, the LCD monitor provides fast and easy access to several of the camera's settings in the quick control screen. Third, when the menu button is pressed, the LCD monitor displays the camera's menu system, where you can change many important settings in the camera. Finally, when the live view movie shooting button is pressed, the LCD monitor provides a live view of the scene. Directly above the LCD monitor is the viewfinder, where you can see camera settings when you're taking pictures. Before you start taking pictures, you'll want to focus the viewfinder. To do this, use the dioptric adjustment knob located to the right of the eye cup. Rotate the dial until the automatic focus points in the viewfinder are in sharp focus. At the bottom of the viewfinder display, you can see the shutter speed, aperture, and ISO settings, as well as the exposure meter in creative zone modes, the maximum bursts or the number of photos you can take without waiting for the camera to catch up, and the focus confirmation light. Over the scene, you will see the camera's focus points. When the shutter button is pressed halfway to focus, the areas where the focus points blink in red will be in focus. This is the menu button, which provides access to the camera's menu system. And this is the info button. In the camera's shooting, playback, and live view modes, pressing this button will display helpful information. We'll discuss more about the camera's display settings later in this guide. This is the Live View Movie Shooting button. When the mode dial is set to any of the shooting modes, you can press this button to use the camera's Live View feature. When the power switch is set to Movie, pressing this button will start and end movie recording. This button has two functions. First, it is the AE Lock button. When the shutter button is pressed and held halfway down, you can press the AE Lock button to lock the exposure while you recompose the image. This button also serves as the Index Reduce button in the camera's playback mode. This button also serves two functions. First, it is the AF Point Selection button. Pressing this button will allow you to select the AF point you'd like to use. This button is also the Magnify button in the camera's playback mode. This is the Aperture Exposure Compensation button. In the manual shooting mode, pressing and holding this button while rotating the main dial will change the aperture setting. This button is also the exposure compensation button. In the camera's program auto, shutter priority, and aperture priority modes, you can press and hold this button while rotating the main dial to adjust the overall brightness of the image. If you place the exposure compensation cursor at the plus side of the scale, the image will be brighter. And if you place the cursor toward the minus side, the image will be darker. After you've taken the photo, you'll want to be sure to set the exposure compensation back to zero. 
Below the Aperture Exposure Compensation button, there are the cross keys. They're used for navigating the menu system, scrolling through images in playback, and accessing information in the shooting settings display. This button has two functions. First, it is the Set button, which is used to confirm selections on the LCD screen. Next, it is the Quick Control button. With the camera's Quick Control feature, you can gain access to the camera's settings on the LCD. After you've pressed the Quick Control button, you can use the cross keys to navigate to different camera settings. To change a setting, press the Quick Control Set button to view the options. Note that you can also use the touch screen to access the settings in the Quick Control screen. We'll discuss the Quick Control screen in greater detail later in this guide. Below the cross keys, you'll find the Playback button and the Erase button, which you can use to view and erase images on the memory card. This is the memory card access lamp, which indicates that the memory card is being read or written to. When this lamp is lit, do not open the card slot cover or remove the battery. Your SL1 has a variety of image quality and size settings that will allow you to capture images with resolution, file format, and compression that you need for your scenario. Let's first take a moment to talk about the camera's image quality and image size options. Your Canon SL1 can record image files in two different image quality settings or file types, RAW and JPEG. First, there is the RAW file format. RAW files are not actually image files. They are actually the raw data saved to the memory card directly from the image sensor. This means that RAW files must be processed on the computer before they're printed. Next, RAW file sizes are considerably larger than JPEG files. RAW files have a much broader range of tones. Shadow and highlight areas have more detail than other image files, and you can extensively edit RAW files without losing image data. The other image quality setting on the SL1 is JPEG. JPEG files are a standard compressed file format that is supported by any image software. Because JPEG files are compressed, the file sizes are very small compared to RAW files, but they also have a much narrower range of tones and will lose some image data each time they're saved. Let's take a look at how to choose the image quality and size settings on the SL1. First, we'll press the menu button. The first menu item in the first shooting menu is image quality. We'll press Set to choose the option we'd like. You'll notice that for each of the large, medium, and small quality settings, there are two icons. This icon indicates the fine quality JPEG format with lower compression. When the fine quality option is selected, JPEG images will have less compression and a little better image quality. This icon indicates the normal quality JPEG with higher compression. When the normal quality option is selected, JPEG images will have higher compression and a little lower image quality. Both formats will use the same number of pixels to record the image. The only difference is the compression of the file. For all of the image quality settings, the camera will show you the number of megapixels the camera will use to record the photo, the pixel count, and the number of shots you will be able to fit on the memory card with that image quality setting. The large quality settings use all 18 megapixels, the medium settings use 8 megapixels, and the small settings use 4.5 megapixels. The S2 and S3 settings use 2.5 and 0.3 megapixels respectively. These lower quality JPEG settings are useful if you know that you will only be using the files for email, but I generally like to use the highest quality JPEG setting. The last two options are the raw quality options for the SL1. The first raw quality option is raw plus large fine quality JPEG. When you use this setting, the camera will record a fine quality JPEG in addition to the raw image file. The other raw option records only the raw image file. One of the most important concepts in photography is exposure, or the amount of light that falls on the camera's image sensor or film. A properly exposed photo will have good detail in the shadow, midtone, and highlight areas. 
Photos that are too bright are overexposed and photos that are too dark are underexposed. There are four ways that your SL1 measures light. These are the camera's metering modes. The camera's metering modes can be changed in the creative zones only. To access the camera's metering modes, we'll press the quick control button to access the quick control screen and select the metering mode icon. The first metering mode is called evaluative metering. This is a great general use metering mode that can be used in most shooting scenarios. When this mode is selected, the camera will divide the scene into zones. Then the camera measures the shadows and highlights in each zone and averages all of the zones. Then the camera uses the average to set the exposure automatically to suit the scene. This is a good mode to use for many situations, but sometimes when the scene is very bright or very dark, you may want to use a different metering mode. The next mode is partial metering. This is effective when the background is much brighter than the subject due to backlighting. Partial metering covers about 9% of the viewfinder area at the center. Spot metering is for metering a specific part of the subject or scene. The metering is weighted at the center covering about 3.8% of the viewfinder area. The next mode is center weighted metering. Center weighted metering functions much like evaluative metering with zones being evaluated and averaged but with center weighted metering, the zones that are in the center area of the frame are given the greatest weight. The zones that are outside of the center area of the frame are taken into account as well, but these zones are given much less priority when determining the exposure. Center weighted metering is a classic mode used for portraits. Now that you know a little about how your camera sees and measures light to create properly exposed photos, let's talk a little about shooting modes on the SL1. To select a shooting mode, simply rotate the mode dial. With the Scene Intelligent Auto, Flash Off, Creative Auto, and Scene Modes, the camera chooses everything for you. All you need to do is point and shoot. First, there is the Scene Intelligent Auto mode. With this mode, the camera will quickly assess the scene and set the best settings automatically. To take a picture in this mode, simply press the shutter button halfway to allow the camera to focus. The focus point or points that achieve focus will blink in red in the viewfinder and green in live view. If needed, the flash will pop up automatically. Then simply press the shutter button the rest of the way to take the picture. The next mode is flash off. This mode functions in the same way as the auto mode, except that the flash is disabled. Use this mode in places where flash photography is prohibited or inappropriate. This mode is also a good mode to use for candlelight scenes or if you want to create streaks of light for creative effect. The next mode is creative auto. This is a similar mode to the scene intelligent auto mode, but with this mode, you'll have control over the depth of field, drive mode, and flash. To access and change the settings for the creative auto mode, make sure the mode dial is set to CA and press the quick control button. At the top of the screen, you can choose from several ambient settings and other creative effects. We'll discuss more about ambient settings later in this guide. You can also adjust the level of background blur or depth of field. And below that, there are settings for the drive mode and the flash mode. On the left side of the screen, you can choose whether or not the camera will record two images each time the shutter button is pressed. If you enable this feature, two images will be recorded. The first will be the standard image, and the other will have the selected effect setting applied. Now let's take a look at the image zone modes. When any of the image zone modes are selected, you can adjust several camera settings by pressing the quick control button. Just as with the creative auto mode, the first setting that you can adjust is the ambient setting. Below that, you can choose a setting to match the type of light or scene that you're shooting in. And at the bottom of the screen, you can choose from the available drive modes for that image zone mode. The first image zone mode is the portrait mode. Use this mode when you want the subject to be in focus and what is behind the subject to have a soft focus. The next mode is the landscape mode. Use this mode when you want everything in the foreground and background to be in sharp focus. The camera will then adjust the shutter speed to get the proper exposure. 
In this setting, the shutter speed can get pretty slow, so be sure to steady your camera or use a tripod to avoid camera shake. Next, there is the close-up mode, which is great for photographing small objects. Use this mode at the lens's minimum focusing distance. To capture fast-moving subjects, select the sports mode. Note that this mode works best outdoors with plenty of light. The next mode on the mode dial is special scene. Within this mode, there are six special scene modes for certain types of shooting scenarios. To access the special scene modes, make sure the mode dial is set to special scene, then press the quick control button. To select the mode you'd like, rotate the main dial. The first special scene mode is kids. This is a good mode to use for capturing photos of kids in motion. The camera will continuously focus on the subject and record images while the shutter button is held down completely. The next special scene mode is food. When this mode is selected, photographs of food will look fresh and vibrant. Next, there is the candlelight special scene mode. This is a great mode to use to preserve the ambience in photos with candlelight. Note that live view shooting is not available in this mode. The next special scene mode is night portrait mode. This mode is designed to capture your subject and obtain a natural looking exposure in the background. In order for the subject to be well lit, the flash will fire. Hold the camera very still or support it with a tripod. The next mode is the handheld night scene mode. With this mode, the camera will take four shots at very high speed and combine them in camera to produce an image with minimized blur due to camera shake. When you're using this mode, hold the camera very steady while the four shots are being taken. The final special scene mode on the SL1 is the HDR backlight mode. With this mode, the camera will capture three shots at high speed and combine them to create a final image with improved detail in shadow and highlight areas. This is a great mode to use when you're taking pictures with bright light shining behind the subject. Now let's take a look at the more advanced shooting modes on the SL1. The first mode is called Program Auto Exposure and is represented with a P on the mode dial. In this mode, the camera automatically adjusts shutter speed and aperture for optimal exposure. But you can change the aperture and shutter speed combinations to suit your needs. With the Program AE mode, you will also have full control over the camera's focus mode, drive mode, and flash settings. To operate in this mode, rotate the mode dial to P. You can monitor the aperture and shutter speed in the viewfinder or on the information display. If you'd like to change the aperture and shutter speed combination, rotate the main dial. Then simply press the shutter button halfway to focus and the rest of the way to take the picture. The next setting on the mode dial is the TV or shutter priority mode. The TV stands for time value. The shutter priority mode is useful for times when you want to control motion in a scene whether it's freezing action or blurring the motion of a subject. In this mode, you'll set the shutter speed and the camera will automatically select the correct aperture value. To use the camera in shutter priority mode, set the mode dial to TV. Rotate the main dial to select the shutter speed. To set the shutter speed with the touch screen, tap the Q at the bottom corner of the screen. Then, touch the shutter speed setting. You can swipe your finger to select any shutter speed value. Now, simply press the shutter button halfway to focus and the rest of the way to take the picture. The next shooting mode is the AV or Aperture Priority Mode. The Aperture Priority Mode is useful for times when you want to control the depth of field in an image. Depth of field is the term used to describe the distance between the nearest and farthest objects in a scene that appear acceptably sharp in an image. When only a small area or subject in the image is in focus, it's said to have a shallow depth of field. This effect is achieved by using a small f-stop number. When everything in both the foreground and background is in focus, an image is said to have a long depth of field. For a long depth of field, choose a large f-stop number. When you're shooting in aperture priority mode, you'll set the aperture and the camera will automatically select the correct shutter speed for proper exposure. To use this mode, select AV on the mode dial. To select an aperture value, rotate the main dial. Note that you can also use the touch screen to select the aperture value. Once you have made your selection, press the shutter button halfway to focus and the rest of the way to take the picture. 
The next shooting mode is manual mode. This mode gives you complete control of the camera. In manual mode, you will set both the shutter speed and aperture to create the exposure. To operate the camera in manual mode, select M on the mode dial. To set the shutter speed, rotate the main dial. To set the aperture, press and hold the aperture button while rotating the main dial. To select the shutter speed and aperture with the touch screen, simply touch the Q at the bottom corner of the monitor. Touch the setting you'd like to adjust and swipe to make your selection. You can also use the on-screen arrow buttons at the top of the screen. Now, press the shutter button halfway so that as you're making adjustments to the aperture and shutter speed, you can watch the exposure scale on the LCD monitor or through the viewfinder. When the exposure scale indicator is near the center of the scale, the image should be properly exposed. You can choose just the right aperture and shutter speed combination for your scene, whether you want to freeze action or create a very shallow depth of field. Make the necessary adjustments to the aperture and shutter speed and press the shutter button halfway down to focus and the rest of the way down to take the picture. In addition to aperture and shutter speed, the camera's ISO setting will have a significant impact on whether your images are properly exposed. The ISO sets the image sensor's sensitivity to light. The higher the number, the less light that is required to properly expose the image sensor. You can either have the camera automatically choose the sensitivity or you can set it manually. To set the ISO and the SL1, press the ISO button then set the ISO by rotating the main dial while watching the LCD monitor. You can also set the ISO by pressing the quick control button and using the cross keys. Or you can use the touch screen. You can select ISO Auto and you can also choose from ISOs ranging from 100 to 12,800. The image sensor on your camera is very powerful. It will allow you to use a very high ISO setting and still have great images. Keep in mind, however, that some very high ISO settings will introduce digital noise or grain into your images. You want to experiment with the camera's ISO settings to become familiar with their range and control. Here's a guide that will help you have a basic idea of what ISO settings to use in various situations. When you're outdoors in full sun, use ISO 100 to 200. In the shade, on an overcast day, or indoors with lots of window light, use ISO 400. ISOs 800 and higher should be used indoors, for action shots, or in other low-light conditions. Now that we've discussed shooting modes and ISO settings, let's take a minute to talk about the camera's drive modes. The drive modes determine how many times the shutter releases when you press the shutter button. The SL1 has single shooting, continuous shooting, 10-second self-timer remote control, two-second self-timer, and continuous self-timer. To set the drive mode, press the quick control button and select the drive mode setting. In single shooting drive mode, one picture will be taken when you press the shutter button completely. This is a good mode for stationary subjects. The continuous shooting drive mode will record up to five frames per second while the shutter button is pressed down completely. The silent shooting drive mode is like the single shooting drive mode except that the shutter is much quieter than the single shooting drive mode. This is a great mode when you don't want to disrupt quiet surroundings. The silent continuous shooting drive mode is like the continuous shooting drive mode, but the shutter is much quieter, making it more appropriate for use in quiet surroundings. The 10 second self timer remote control drive mode will take the picture 10 seconds after the shutter button has been pressed completely. Use this drive mode for times when you'd like to include yourself in the picture. This is also the mode to select if you're using an optional remote control. You'll want to use a tripod when you're using this drive mode. The two second self timer will take the picture two seconds after the shutter button is pressed completely. This is a good mode when you're taking pictures at very slow shutter speeds and you'd like to minimize camera shake. The last drive mode is the continuous self timer drive mode. With this mode, the camera will take between 2 and 10 pictures continuously 10 seconds after the shutter button is pressed completely. You can set the number of continuous shots using the cross keys or touch screen.
The Canon SL1 has two great features that you can use to capture great photos and amazing HD video. Let's discuss the camera's live view and movie modes. Please note that it's important to avoid directing the camera's lens toward the sun in live view and movie modes, as this can seriously damage the camera's internal components. To shoot in live view, simply press the live view movie shooting button. In live view, you can take a picture by pressing the shutter button, or you can use the touch shutter feature, which will allow you to focus and take the picture simply by tapping the screen. To enable or disable the touch shutter feature, simply tap the touch shutter icon at the bottom corner of the screen. Before you start taking pictures in live view, you'll want to understand the live view autofocus methods. In live view, there are four different AF modes to choose from. Face tracking, FlexiZone Multi, FlexiZone Single, and Quick Mode. When the camera is using face tracking or either of the FlexiZone modes, focus will take a little longer than in Quick Mode. To choose the AF method in live view, simply press the Quick Control button and select the AF method setting. Here you can choose from any of the four live view AF modes. The first mode is face tracking. In this mode, the camera will find and focus on human faces in the scene. If a face that the camera is focusing on moves, the AF area will track the face to maintain focus. If multiple faces are detected, you can use the cross keys or touch screen to select the face that you'd like the camera to focus on. If the camera does not detect any faces in the scene, it will automatically switch to the FlexiZone Multi-AF mode. To focus, press the shutter button down halfway. The AF point will turn green and a beep will sound. Then simply press the shutter button the rest of the way to take the picture. The next AF mode in live view is FlexiZone Multi. In this mode, you can choose to have the camera use a wide area, or you can select one of nine AF zones. To toggle between wide area and zone, press the erase button. When the white area is used, the camera will automatically focus using one or several of the 31 AF points when the shutter button is pressed halfway. If the camera does not focus on the desired subject, you can use one of the nine zones. When zone is selected, you can use either the cross keys or touch screen to select the desired zone. When one of the zones is selected, the camera will automatically use only the AF points that are in the selected zone for focus. Again, press the shutter button down halfway. When the AF points appear in green and the beep sounds, press the shutter button the rest of the way to take the picture. By default, your camera is set to use continuous AF when in live view. This means that the camera will constantly focus on the nearest subject and the lens will be frequently moving. If you'd like to disable continuous AF to conserve battery life, this can be done through the camera's menu system. In the Live View Shooting menu, select Continuous AF and select Disable. The SL1 has a great feature to help you get great focus when using manual focus in Live View. You can use the camera's magnified view to see the exact area you're focusing on. Here's how to use the magnified view with manual focus in Live View. First, frame the image on the LCD monitor. Then, set the focus switch on the lens to MF. Now, you can press the magnify button or you can touch the magnified view icon on the touch screen. Pressing the button once will activate the magnified view. Pressing the button a second time will zoom to five times and pressing the button a third time will zoom to 10 times. Use the cross keys to scroll to the area that you'd like to be in focus. Rotate the focus ring on the lens until the magnified area is in sharp focus. Then, press the shutter button completely to take the picture. The image will be recorded at the normal level of zoom. When you're finished using manual focus, you'll want to set the switch on the lens back to AF. In the default Live View screen, several important shooting settings are displayed on screen in the Live View information display. Note that the items displayed will vary depending on the shooting mode you have selected. We'll be showing the information that is displayed when the camera is set to manual mode. Here you'll see the touch shutter icon, the shutter speed, the aperture, 
the exposure compensation scale, the ISO setting, and the magnified view icon. At the top of the screen, you'll see the possible shots, the battery check, and the quick control icon. To show another information display, press the info button. In addition to the settings that were previously displayed, you'll see the shooting mode, the AF mode, the drive mode, the metering mode, the image recording quality, the white balance setting, the picture style, the auto lighting optimizer setting, and the creative filter. Pressing the info button again will display a real-time histogram of the scene to help you monitor the overall exposure and pressing the info button again will remove all of the icons from the display. In live view, you can access the quick control screen to change a variety of shooting settings. To access the quick control screen, press the quick control button. You can use the cross keys or touch screen to make selections. In addition to live view, your SL1 is also capable of shooting high quality HD video. To use the camera's movie mode, set the power switch to the movie icon. When shooting movies, use an SD Speed Class 6 memory card or higher. If a slower memory card is used, the movie may not be properly recorded. While shooting movies or in live view, be sure that you do not point the lens directly into the sun as it may damage the camera's components. To access the camera's movie recording settings, first make sure the power switch is set to movie. Then enter the camera's menu system and navigate to the second movie menu. Here select movie recording size option. Just like capturing still photos, you can set the camera to record video at different resolutions or recording sizes. The SL1 has three resolution settings, 1920 by 1080, 1280 by 720, and 640 by 480. Each of these recording sizes have different frame rate options. Choosing one of the two options on the left, 1920 by 1080, will allow you to capture full HD video. Use this when you want the highest resolution video the camera is capable of recording. The difference between these two options is the frame rate. You can select either 30 frames per second or you can select 24 frames per second. If you choose the 30 frames per second option, your movie will look like the video that you will see on television. If you choose the 24 frames per second option, your movie will closely imitate the look that you will get if you were using a film video camera. The 1280 by 720 option is good for times when you want to have high quality video, but it doesn't need to be full HD. The frame rate for this recording size is 60 frames per second. This frame rate is good for recording fast action video. The last option is 640 by 480. This is a lower resolution setting that is good for when you only know that you want to use the movie for emailing or posting online. This recording size will use the 30 frames per second frame rate. The purpose or use of the finished video will help you decide which recording size and frame rate to use. Keep in mind that the higher the resolution, the larger the file sizes will be. Now that we've discussed movie recording size options, let's talk about how to actually record movies with the SL1. First, you'll need to select the shooting mode. If the mode dial is set to any mode except for manual, the camera will automatically set the exposure for movie recording. In manual mode, you will have access to the same exposure controls for shutter speed, aperture, and ISO as you do in still shooting. When shooting movies with moving subjects, it's a good idea to keep the shutter speed in the range of 1 30th of a second to 1 125th of a second. If you use a faster shutter speed, the motion will not appear as smooth. Make sure the power switch is set to movie, then focus using the methods that we've discussed in the live view shooting section of this guide. And to start recording, press the movie shooting button. While the movie is recording, the recording movie icon will be displayed on the top corner of the screen. If you'd like to shoot a still image while recording a movie, simply press the shutter button completely. The movie file will have a still moment that will last about one second at the time the still image was taken. To end recording, press the movie shooting button again. Your movie files will be saved as MOV files. To view a movie that you have recorded, press the playback button. And if necessary, use the cross keys to find the movie that you'd like to play. 
use the touch screen to play the movie. You can control the volume of the sound that is played back with the main dial. With the SL1, you have the ability to edit movies within the movie playback. At the point that you'd like to have your clip start or end, press the menu button or touch screen to pause the movie. Then use the touch screen or cross keys to select edit from the playback mode options. Here you can select cut beginning or cut end. Press set. Now you can use the cross keys to fast forward or rewind the movie. The portion of your movie that is shown in gray in the playback position bar is what will remain. Press set and select save. Here you can choose new file, overwrite, or cancel. We'll select new file. Press set and select OK. And press set again. Note that selecting overwrite will erase the original movie and replace it with the edited version. To record sound in movie mode, the SL1 has a built-in microphone, which will record sound automatically by default. If you'd like to change the microphone sensitivity or turn off sound recording, you can do this through the camera's menu system. Enter the camera's second movie menu and select Sound Recording. Here you can select Auto, Manual, or Disable. If you select Manual, you can adjust the recording level to suit your needs. You can also choose whether or not you'd like to use the wind filter or attenuator to be enabled. If you're shooting movies outdoors in windy conditions, enabling the filter will reduce the noise caused by wind. If there is no wind or you're shooting indoors, you'll want to disable the filter, as the sound will be more natural than it would be if the filter was enabled. When enabled, the attenuator will reduce sound distortion when audio recording. When you're using the movie mode, the information display will appear much the same as it does for live view. The only difference is the servo AF icon at the bottom of the screen. This icon indicates whether or not the camera is using movie servo AF. When enabled, movie servo AF will allow you to record a movie while continuously focusing on the subject. A unique feature on the SL1 is video snapshot. This feature allows you to create a series of short two, four, or eight second video clips and then save them into an album on the memory card. The clips in the video snapshot album can be combined to create an interesting and creative short movie. Let's take a look at the video snapshot feature on the SL1. First, we'll need to make sure the feature is enabled using the camera's menu system. We'll navigate to the second movie shooting menu and select video snapshot. Here, we'll select Enable. Now, we'll select Album Settings. We'll want to create a new album. And here, we can select the snapshot length. Now, we'll select OK. To create the first video snapshot, we'll press the shutter button halfway to focus, and then press the Movie Shooting button to begin recording. When the snapshot has finished recording, the camera will prompt you with options to save as an album, play back the snapshot, and do not save as an album. Select Save as Album. The camera will return to the movie shooting screen, and you can record the next snapshot. Now the options are Add to Album, Save as New Album, Play Back Video Snapshot, and Delete without saving to album. We'll select Add to Album. You can shoot up to eight video snapshots to be combined into an album. To playback or edit an album, press the playback button and use the cross keys to select the album to play back. Playing and editing albums is done in the same way as playing and editing normal movie files. The SL1 has a large LCD monitor where you can review images, adjust menu settings, and access the quick control screen. There are also many options available for previewing images and many of the camera's settings can easily be accessed through the quick control screen. Let's discuss how to use the camera's features.
For basic playback of your images on the camera's LCD monitor, simply press the playback button. To scroll through the images, you can use the cross keys or you can swipe the touch screen. If you'd like to jump forward or backward 10 images, you can rotate the main dial. If you have a large number of images recorded on the memory card, you may find it faster to find the photos that you would like to view if you display multiple photos on the screen at once. To do this, you can press the Image Index Reduce button, or you can pinch the image on the screen. Four images will be displayed on the monitor. You can press the Image Index Reduce button or pinch the screen again to display nine images. You can use the cross keys or touch screen to scroll through the images, and you can press the set button for a full screen view of an image. As discussed, you can also magnify images on the LCD monitor. This is especially useful when you want to check for good focus in detail areas of the photo. You can press the magnify button or you can pinch outward across the touch screen to zoom the image. You can press the magnify button multiple times to increase the level of zoom. Then you can use the cross keys to scroll top to bottom and side to side on the photo. If you rotate the main dial, you can scroll through the images on the card at the same level of magnification. As you're scrolling through photos in the camera's playback, you may find some images that you'd like to protect from being accidentally erased. To protect an image, press the quick control button and select the protect icon and enable. A small protect icon will appear at the top of the image. When you're finished, press the quick control button to exit the screen. If you find a photo that didn't turn out, you can remove it from your memory card by pressing the erase button. When the dialog appears, select erase and press set, and the image will be removed from the memory card. Note that once an image is erased, it cannot be recovered. You can also rotate your images for viewing on the LCD monitor and computer. To do this, press the quick control button and select the rotate image option. Here you can choose whether to rotate the image left or right. Another useful playback feature in the quick control screen is image rating. With this feature, you can assign star ratings to images and movies on the memory card. You can apply one of five different star ratings to your images, which is helpful when you're sorting them for printing, archiving, and deleting. Also in the quick control screen, you can apply creative filters to your photos. You can choose from seven different options. First, there is grainy black and white, which will convert your photo to black and white and give you three levels of control for the contrast of the photo. After you've made your selections, you can press Set and select OK when the camera asks you if you want to save the edited photo as a new file. The next creative filter is Soft Focus. This filter will give the image a soft look and it also has three different levels of effect for you to choose from. After you've adjusted the image to your liking, you can save it as a different file on the memory card. The third creative filter is the Fisheye Filter. Applying this filter to an image will mimic the effect of a fisheye lens. You can adjust the level of distortion that you'd like the image to have and save it as a separate file. Next, there is Art Bold. The Art Bold filter will create an image that is vibrant and will make the image appear three-dimensional with the look of an oil painting. Again, you can choose the level of effect you'd like and save it as a new file. Next, there is the Water Painting Effect filter which will give the image the look of a watercolor painting with soft colors. There are three levels of color density to choose from. Next is the toy camera filter. This filter mimics the effect of toy cameras. It will give the image an aged color tone of your choice and it will darken the edges of the image. The last filter is the miniature effect. This filter will give the image the look of a diorama where only a specific area of the frame is in focus. You can adjust the in focus area with the cross keys and you can change the orientation of the in focus area by pressing the info button. The next option in the playback quick control screen is resize where you can create a smaller copy of an image and save it to the memory card. On the right side of the playback quick control screen there are three icons. Selecting the top icon will exit the quick control screen and resume normal playback. 
The next option will allow you to save a cropped version of the image to the memory card. You can press the magnify button to adjust the level of zoom for the crop. You can rotate the main dial to change the aspect ratio. There are options for 3 2, 16 9, 4 3, and 1 to 1. To rotate the crop box either vertically or horizontally, press the info button. You can use the cross keys to place the crop at the desired area of the frame. The other icon is the image jump setting. By default, the image jump feature will jump 10 images when the main dial is rotated in playback mode. With this option, you can change the function of the image jump feature. You can choose from jump 10 images, jump 100 images, display by date, display by folder, display movies only, display stills only, and display by image rating. Now let's take a look at the different playback displays on the SL1. The first and default playback screen is the no information screen and is simply a full screen display of the image. Additional information about the image can be viewed by pressing the info button. Each time the info button is pressed, a different set of information will be displayed. The next display option is the basic information display. Here you can see the shutter speed, aperture, the folder number and file number. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see the image number out of the total number of images. Pressing the info button again will show the shooting information display. In addition to the information that was shown in the basic info display, you'll see the histogram of the image, which gives the basic idea of the tone distribution of the image. If the histogram data is shifted toward the left side of the graph, the image will probably be dark or underexposed. If the histogram is shifted to the right side of the graph, the image will be too bright or overexposed. In most cases, a properly exposed photo will have data distributed over the whole graph. The histogram will help you have a basic idea of the overall exposure of your image when you're outdoors in bright sunlight and the photos are difficult to see on the LCD monitor. In the shooting information display, you'll also see the shooting mode, metering mode, the ISO setting, the white balance setting, the picture style, the image recording quality, the file size, the color space, the date and time the image was recorded. Also within the shooting information playback, you will notice areas of the image that blink in black. These areas are very overexposed and have lost detail. Pressing the info button again will show the histogram display where you can see the brightness histogram as well as histograms for each of the red, green, and blue color channels. Here you can see the areas of any of the individual channels that are shifted to the left, showing the dark tones in that channel, or shifted to the right, showing the lighter tones in that color channel. If any of the channels have distribution that is shifted too far to the right, that color channel will be oversaturated and show little or no detail. And if any of the channels have distribution that is shifted too far to the left, that channel will lack color information. Let's discuss the focus modes that are available on the SL1. When you're choosing the focus mode, the main thing you'll want to think about is whether or not the subject is in motion. The Canon SL1 has this sophisticated autofocus system with a variety of autofocus modes and AF areas that when used well together will help you get great focus regardless of what type of subject you're photographing. Let's first discuss the camera's three autofocus modes, one shot, AI focus, and AI servo. To choose an autofocus mode on the SL1, press the quick control button and use the cross keys to select the AF mode setting. The first focus mode is one shot and is best suited for stationary subjects. Choose this mode when you're photographing objects or when you're doing portrait work with an older child or adult. When focus is achieved, the AF point which achieved focus will flash in red in the viewfinder and the focus confirmation light in the viewfinder will light. 
The AI Servo AF mode is best suited for moving subjects and is for use when focusing distance keeps changing. Use this mode when you're photographing sporting events, small children or animals. While you hold down the shutter button halfway, the subject will be focused continuously. When the AF point selection is automatic, the camera first uses the center AF point to focus. During autofocusing, if the subject moves away from the center AF point, focus tracking continues as long as the subject is covered by another AF point. In the AI focus mode, the focus mode automatically switches from one shot AF to AI servo if the still subject starts moving. In addition to the camera's auto focus modes, you'll also want to be familiar with the nine AF points. By selecting a suitable AF point, you can shoot with auto focus while framing the subject as desired. In basic shooting zones, the AF point selection will take effect automatically. When shooting in the creative zones, you can choose the AF point manually. To select an AF point, make sure the lens is in the AF position and make sure that the camera is set to one of the creative zone modes. Press the AF point selection button and use the cross keys or rotate the main dial while watching the LCD monitor or looking through the viewfinder. Pressing set toggles the AF point selection between the center AF point and automatic AF point selection. Note that you can also use the touch screen to make your selection. The last of the focusing modes is the manual focus or MF mode. To use the camera's manual focus, simply switch the focus mode switch on the lens to MF. This gives you the control to manually focus on any subject through the viewfinder using the focus ring. Sometimes a photo may have poor focus, but it's not related to the camera's focus mode or focus area mode. Camera shake happens when the camera moves while the shutter is open. This exposes the image sensor while the camera is moving and the result is a blurry image. Always try to steady the camera. Holding it with two hands and pressing the viewfinder gently against your face will help. You can also lean against something or use a tripod, a monopod, or even a beanbag to steady the camera. You can also reduce the effect of camera shake by selecting a fast shutter speed. This reduces the amount of time the image sensor is exposed to shaky conditions. A helpful rule of thumb is to set your shutter speed to one over the focal length. Sound confusing? Let me explain. If the focal length on your lens is 300 millimeters, for example, you should set your shutter speed to at least one three hundredth of a second. If the focal length is 30 millimeters, you might get by using a shutter speed as low as one thirtieth of a second. Let's take a look at the SL1's sophisticated menu system. Depending on what shooting mode you're using, different menus and menu items will appear. We'll be showing the menu options that are available in the camera's creative zone modes. Many of these settings are discussed in greater details in other chapters of this guide. We'll just look at an overview of the menu items in this chapter. The first three menu tabs are the shooting menus, indicated by the red color and the small camera icon. The shooting menus are where you'll find all of the settings that are related to the camera's operation when taking still photographs. Let's look at each of the shooting menu items. First, there is the image quality, where you can choose from a variety of image qualities and sizes. The next option allows you to enable or disable the beep sound that is heard when the camera focuses. Next, there is the Drive Self Timer option, which will allow you to select the camera's drive mode. The Release Shutter Button Without Card option determines whether or not the camera will allow you to take a picture if there is not an SD memory card inserted. In the Image Review option, you can choose how long you'd like the image to be displayed on the LCD monitor immediately after it's taken. You can choose Off, the image will not be displayed at all, 2, 4, or 8 seconds, or you can choose hold. With the hold option, the image will be displayed until the camera automatically goes into sleep mode. The next option is lens aberration correction. This setting will allow you to adjust the settings for peripheral illumination correction as well as chromatic aberration correction. 
The peripheral illumination correction will reduce the vignetting effect that is caused by some lenses. The chromatic aberration correction will reduce the appearance of a color fringe around the edges of the subjects in images. The red eye reduction option enables or disables red eye reduction when the camera's flash is used. The second shooting menu begins with the exposure compensation bracketing setting. Here you can choose whether you'd like the camera to make exposure compensation adjustments in one-third increments or in one-half increments. Next, there is the flash control setting, which contains all of the settings for the camera's built-in flash unit, as well as settings for using an optional external flash unit. The next option is the ISO Auto, where you can choose the maximum ISO setting that you'd like the camera to be able to use when the ISO Auto is selected. Next, there is the Auto Lighting Optimizer setting. With this setting, you can improve detail in shadow and highlight areas of the image. Next, there are the White Balance and Custom White Balance options, which will allow you to select the White Balance setting to ensure good color in your images. The last option is the White Balance Shift Bracketing setting. Here, you can make adjustments to the White Balance Correction and White Balance Bracketing. The third shooting menu begins with the color space setting with two options, sRGB and Adobe RGB. Some photographers prefer sRGB as it requires less processing later. Other photographers prefer the Adobe RGB mode as this mode has a wider range of colors making it a preferred option for images that will be extensively processed on the computer. The next menu item is the picture style setting. Here you can choose from seven preset picture style settings and three user defined picture style settings. Next there is the AF operation which will allow you to select the camera's auto focus mode. Next there is the metering mode option followed by the dust delete data setting. Using this setting combined with the software that is included with your camera will automatically remove any dust spots on the image sensor from your images. The Long Exposure Noise Reduction setting will allow you to select the level of noise reduction for long exposures. And the High ISO Noise Reduction setting will allow you to choose the level of noise reduction for high ISO settings. The next menu is the Live View Shooting menu. It begins with the Live View Shooting option. Here you can choose to have Live View Shooting enabled or disabled. The next menu option is the Live View Autofocus method, followed by the Continuous AF option. When enabled, Continuous AF will continuously focus while the camera is in Live View. The next menu item is Touch Shutter, which will allow you to simply tap the screen to focus and take the picture in Live View. Next, there is Grid Display. With the grid display, you can have a grid shown on the camera's LCD monitor while in live view. This can be useful for creating interesting compositions or for making sure that the horizon line is straight. The next menu option is the aspect ratio. You can choose from 3-2, 4-3, 16-9, and 1-1. to If you're planning on printing 4x6 photos, you'll want to leave this setting on its default. 3-2. The last menu item is the metering timer, which allows you to choose how long the exposure setting is displayed. Now let's take a look at the camera's playback menus, indicated by their blue color in the small play button icon. In the first playback menu, the first three options are for protecting photos, rotating photos, and erasing photos. Next, there is an option for choosing the print order of images if you're connecting the camera to a compatible printer. The next menu item is Photo Book Setup. With this option, you can select images to be copied to a specific folder on your computer using the supplied software. This makes it easier to create and print a photo book. The next menu option is for the creative filters, where you can choose to have one of seven filter effects applied to a photo. And finally, there is the resize option, where you can reduce the size of an image and save it as a copy on the camera's memory card. 
This, the second playback menu begins with the cropping option, which will allow you to save a cropped version of an image to the memory card. The histogram display option allows you to choose whether you'd like to see the brightness histogram or the RGB histogram when you're in the playback mode. The next menu item is the image jump where you can choose one of eight options for scrolling through your photos on the LCD monitor. With the slideshow setting, you can choose to have the images on your memory card played as a slideshow. This feature is especially useful when the camera is connected to a TV. The camera's rating option will allow you to assign a star rating to your photos. The control over HDMI setting will allow you to use a compatible TV's remote control for playback operations when the camera is connected to the TV using an HDMI cable. The four setup menus have important settings for the basic operation and function of the camera. The first menu option in the first setup menu is the select folder option where you can create and select a specific folder for your images to be saved on the memory card. This is useful if you'd like to have images from various events on a vacation, for instance, saved to different locations on the memory card. The next menu item is File Numbering. With this menu item, you can choose how you'd like the image files to be numbered when the memory card is replaced or formatted. The Auto Rotate option will allow you to have vertical images automatically rotate on the LCD monitor and the computer screen for easier viewing. The last menu item in this menu is Format Card, which allows you to format the camera's memory card. The second setup menu begins with Auto Power Off, where you can choose how long you want the camera to be idle before automatically powering off. You can choose from seven different options. Next, there is the LCD brightness option. Here you can choose one of seven different brightness levels for the LCD monitor. The next menu item is the LCD auto off. By default, the LCD monitor will automatically turn off when the viewfinder is covered, like when the camera is brought close to the eye. With this menu item, you can choose to disable that function. The next two items allow you to set the camera's date, time, and time zone and the language for the menus and displays. With the video system option you can choose whether your movie files will be recorded in NTSC or PAL. If you're in the United States you'll want to choose NTSC. The third setup menu begins with screen color. With this option you can choose the color for the information display. Next there is the feature guide. When enabled, the feature guide will provide a description of the selected setting or option on the quick control screen or in live view. The touch control setting will allow you to change the sensitivity or disable the touch screen function of the LCD monitor. The next option will allow you to reverse the roles of the AE lock and AF point selection buttons. Next, there is the sensor cleaning option. You can choose from three different options for cleaning the camera's image sensor. The last menu item is the GPS device settings, which is for use with an optional GPS unit that's attached to the camera. The fourth setup menu begins with Certification Logo Display, which will display some of the camera's certifications. Next, there is the Custom Functions option, where you can customize a variety of camera functions to your liking. Next, there is the copyright information setting. With this setting, you can enter your own copyright information, which will be a part of the image data for every photo that you take. The clear settings option will allow you to reset the camera to factory default settings. And the firmware version setting is for updating the camera's firmware. The final menu is the My Menu, indicated by the green color and the small star icon. With this menu, you can save frequently used menu items so you can find them quickly and easily. To register a menu item to the My Menu, select My Menu Settings, and then Register to My Menu, and scroll to the menu item that you'd like to add. 
Press set to select the menu item, highlight OK, and press set again to save the item to my menu. Press the menu button twice to return to the my menu and you'll see the items that you have registered listed in the options. Let's discuss white balance. It's important to understand that the quality of your pictures is affected by the color of the surrounding light and how the camera's electronics process that light. Compensating for varying light conditions is referred to as setting the white balance. Most light looks white to an untrained eye, but it can be composed of a range of different colors. The color of sunlight is different in daylight, in the shade, or in cloudy conditions. Daylight, for example, is fairly blue and fluorescent light is fairly green. If your camera is set to shoot in daylight, but you're shooting in a setting with fluorescent light, your image will look overly red. Proper camera white balance takes into account the color temperature of a light source, which refers to the relative warmth or coolness of white light. Human eyes are very good at judging what is white under different light sources. However, digital cameras often have difficulty determining auto white balance. Incorrect white balance can create unattractive blue, orange, or even green colors in your photos. The white balance scale is expressed in measurements of Kelvin. The higher color temperatures measured in the area of 5600 Kelvin to 7500 Kelvin represent situations like a sunlit or cloudy day. These shooting situations have a greater amount of blue tones and a lesser amount of red tones. Lower color temperature situations are measured in the area of 3500 Kelvin down to 1900 Kelvin and are found in lighting from a fluorescent light or tungsten light bulbs or even candlelight. These types of shooting situations are found on the lower end of the spectrum and produce a greater amount of red tones and lesser amounts of blue tones. Once you get acquainted with the camera's white balance settings, you can try setting your own using the camera's custom white balance feature. To use this tool effectively, you'll want to be familiar with the color temperature that is most effective for your shooting situation. Again, most light looks white to an untrained eye. Setting your white balance will help your pictures have the proper coloring. If natural looking colors cannot be obtained with auto white balance, you can select one of the other white balance settings to suit the respective light source. To access the white balance settings, press the quick control button and select the white balance setting. The first option is auto white balance. With this setting, the camera will attempt to automatically adjust the color temperature. The next white balance setting is daylight. Daylight is a great setting for taking pictures in the sunlight. This setting is marked with a sun icon. Use the shade setting when you're taking pictures in the shade. It reduces the bluish tones in a picture. This setting is marked by an icon of a house with shade. Use the cloudy setting when taking pictures on days that are overcast. This is marked with a cloud icon. The next white balance setting is tungsten light. This is a good setting to use when taking pictures under common light bulbs. It reduces the reddish tones in a picture. This setting is marked with a light bulb icon. The white fluorescent light setting is great for taking pictures under common fluorescent lighting. The next setting is the flash setting. Use this setting when using the built-in flash or an external flash unit. The next icon is the custom white balance option. Use this setting when you want to manually set the white balance for a specific light source for best accuracy. Let's walk through setting a custom white balance on the SL1. First, you'll need to take a picture of a plain white object in the lighting that you're shooting under. Use a white card, an object like a shirt, or a piece of paper to achieve good results. Now you'll need to set that image as the custom white balance reference. This is done in the menu system under the second shooting menu. Here select custom white balance and select the photo of the white or gray object. Press set and select OK. Then press set again to confirm the custom white balance setting. With the SL1 you can fine tune any of the white balance settings to give the same effect that you would get from a color compensating filter. To do this select white balance shift bracket in the quick control screen. 
Now you can use the cross keys to position the cursor on the grid. Placing the cursor toward the A will increase the amber in the image. Placing the cursor toward the G will increase the green in the image. Placing the cursor toward the B will increase the blue in the image and placing the cursor toward the M will increase the magenta in the image. In addition to white balance, there are three other features on your SL1 that can improve the quality of your images. Ambient settings, picture styles, and the auto lighting optimizer. Let's first discuss ambient settings. These settings are available in most of the basic zone modes and they will allow you to adjust and enhance the color, contrast, and sharpness. To make adjustments to an ambient setting, make sure that the camera is set to any of the basic zone modes except Scene Intelligent Auto, Flash Off, or HDR Backlight. Then press the Quick Control button to access the Quick Control screen. The top option is where you can select Ambient Setting. There are nine different options. First, there is the standard setting. When this setting is selected, only the characteristics of that specific shooting mode will be applied. Next, there is the vivid setting, which will make the image look more sharp and vivid. For all of the ambient settings, except standard, you can adjust the intensity of the effect. You can select low, standard, or strong. Next, there is the soft setting which will make the subject look softer. This is a good setting for portraits, pets, and flowers. Next, there is the warm setting, which will make the image appear softer with warmer colors. Next, there is the intense setting, which will decrease the overall brightness. This will help the subject be more emphasized. Next, there is the cool setting, with this setting, the overall brightness is slightly decreased and the image will have a cooler color cast. Next, there is the brighter setting. This setting will simply increase the brightness of the image. Next, there is the darker setting, which will simply decrease the brightness of the image. The last ambient setting is monochrome, which will allow you to take pictures in black and white, sepia, or blue tone. Picture styles are an intuitive way for you to tell the camera what levels of sharpness, contrast, saturation, and color tone you'd like for your specific shooting scenario. Note that the picture styles are only available when the camera is set to one of the creative zone modes. There are seven different preset picture styles and you can make adjustments to settings in each of them. To access the picture styles, press the quick control button and select the picture style option. Then use the cross keys, main dial, or touch screen to select a picture style. First, there is the auto picture style. This is a good general use picture style. The camera will automatically adjust color tone to fit the scene that you're photographing. This is a good picture style for photos of greenery, nature, outdoor, and sunset scenes. The standard picture style is also a good general use picture style, and it's suitable for most scenes. Images taken with this picture style will look vivid, sharp, and crisp. The portrait picture style is great for photos of people, particularly close-ups. It offers pleasant skin tones and makes the image appear a little softer. The landscape picture style is good for taking pictures of scenery outdoors. This picture style makes the greens and blues of the image more vivid. The neutral picture style is a good setting to choose if you wish to process your images with your computer. Colors in this picture style are natural and subdued. The faithful picture style is also a good setting to choose if you're processing your images with your computer. When shooting under normal daylight, the color is adjusted to match the subject's color. The image is overall dull and subdued. The monochrome picture style is useful when you would like to take black and white photographs. All of these picture styles are fully customizable. Select a picture style that you'd like to customize and press the info button. You can make changes to the sharpness, contrast, saturation, and color tone. Select a parameter that you'd like to make adjustments to and press set. Now you can use the cross keys to adjust the setting. Press set to confirm the adjustment or press the menu button to cancel. 
In addition to the seven preset picture styles, there are also three user-defined picture style options. These options allow you to select and adjust a picture style to your liking and save it for future use. Registering a user-defined picture style is very similar to customizing a picture style, but with a few minor changes. First, select the user-defined picture style and press the info button. Press set to choose a base picture style. Now use the set button and cross keys to make adjustments to any of the parameters. When you're finished, press menu to save changes to a user defined picture style. Now let's discuss the SL1's auto lighting optimizer. With this feature, you can improve contrast and detail in shadow areas of your photo automatically when the camera is set to one of the creative zone modes. You can access the auto lighting optimizer in the quick control screen. Press the quick control button and select the auto lighting optimizer setting. Here you can select disable, low, standard, or high. If you choose low, some shadow areas will be improved. If you select high, most of the shadow areas will be improved. Images may have increased noise with this feature depending on the scenario. Also, if you're using exposure compensation to darken the image while the auto lighting optimizer is active, the exposure compensation may not work as intended. You may need to disable the auto lighting optimizer. Your SL1 has a powerful built-in flash that can provide you with extra light in certain shooting scenarios. As a general rule, you'll want to keep your subject within about 3.5 to 20 feet for the best results. To use the built-in flash in the creative zone mode, simply press the flash button and the flash will pop up. In the basic zone modes, the built-in flash will pop up and fire automatically in low light or backlight conditions. In the flash off mode, landscape mode, sports mode, and HDR backlight mode, the flash will not fire. If you're using the flash and that you find that the image is too bright or too dark, you can use flash exposure compensation to make adjustments. To set the flash exposure compensation, press the quick control button and use the cross keys to select the flash exposure compensation icon and press set. Now you can rotate the main dial to the right or to the left to adjust the intensity of the flash. If you move the indicator toward the minus side of the scale, the flash will produce less light. If you move the indicator toward the plus side of the scale, the flash will produce more light. Now press the shutter button halfway to exit the screen and now simply take the picture. We hope you've enjoyed learning more about your Canon SL1. We know this new information will give you enough confidence and know-how to get the most out of your camera. Remember, you can refer back to any section of this guide at any time. Just select the topics you want to review from the main menu. Watch for more Quick Pro guides on newly released cameras. Thanks for watching.